Hey Todd, um, hi. You're three. You're three hours ahead of me. Uh, I want to start I with this. I want to start with this. Um, how's your day going so far? What's good? My day is going okay. Uh, I've been up since six, so it feels like I'm on my second day. Um, but it's pretty good. Just been working. Had some clients before. Some clients after. Just trying to make it to the end. <laughs> how's your day? You're uh, just getting up, or have you been up for a while? Uh, no, dude. I've been up since four thirty. I just got back from. Uh, yeah, I just did a CrossFit workout. Um, Sweaty, I have no pants on. I just went right into Hot. this. Um, hey, so do listen, you work out at 4 30 every morning? Uh, not every morning, but uh, I'm going to Idaho today, so it was the only day I could get cool. it in. So I was like, fuck it, I'm okay. getting up. Uh, I've had many uh therapists and sex therapists on my show, but as far as sex therapists go, I know you're more than that. Um, <laughs> all women, and so I'm really excited to talk to you today because you are my first male sex therapist. We're going to talk about love and intimacy cool. and all that. I think it's important for more men to have these conversations. Yeah, totally. I mean, most, it, most sex therapists are women. Um, and yeah. so then um, I think a lot of guys, cis men may then have trouble having these conversations if it's not coming yeah. from another man. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, important. Before we get to your brand sure. new book, um, how to lose, how to love someone before lose, how to love someone without losing your mind. Yeah. Yep. Uh, l love the title. And uh, I want to say, cause I, I, I hear, um, I think Gen Z mostly using the word literally wrong. And I hear Gen Z saying, yeah, l I'm literally losing my mind. It's like, no, that means that <clears throat> your mind's coming out of your, out of your head. But, um, how do you think, give me some examples of what losing your mind looks like when we fall in love. I'm sure you have clients who uh, quote yeah, unquote lose I their minds. I also yeah. use the word literally way too much. <laughs> yeah. Like everything in, in I do, way. in the right. wrong way. Everything I do is yeah. like, liter I just posted on my story, literally every, I mean, I, I need to stop, <laughs> but it's so hard to stop. It's so nice. <laughs> it, it, it's a problem. Um, what is it? What is losing one's mind? Is that was the, that was the question. What are some examples? How are people losing their minds when they're trying to love someone? I mean, I think it happens often. I know I've, I've quote unquote well, lost my mind. Give me some, yeah, some examples. I mean, I've lost my mind. It's gone. Yeah. I don't know where it is. Um, it's fucking over. Uh, I mean, this is the everyday annoyances, the hatred you left the mm. fucking door open again, your underwear is mm. on the bathroom floor. And then we say, well, why is this such a big deal? But right. if these things become huge deals. Um, but it's also much deeper issues and relational dynamics that can be extremely challenging that will drive us absolutely fucking crazy in terms of, you know, you have two people that have differing needs. Um, one who has needs of closeness and the other one who has needs of distance. And um, mm -hmm. that dissonance is going to drive you crazy. It will drive you crazy. You're talking negotiating. about the, uh, the anxious I don't even say attachment dance. thing. But you like to, yeah. I mean, well, because it's it can. Out. It's played out, right? It's, it's played, played out. out. I mean, I just posted something today about, about being anxious or being avoidant. Um, right. But it's much more complicated than that. Um, yeah. There's just a variety of different things. People are really frustrating. People are really disappointing and limited. I'm including myself in this. I know mm -hmm. you're perfect, but everybody else <laughs> um, is really hard to be with, um, yeah. especially if it's over a longer period of time. So managing somebody else's limitations and also managing the dissonance between your limitations and theirs um, is a crazy making game. Would you say that the ability to do that is what love is? I don't know what I would say what love is because I have no clue. Um, but the ability to do that, <laughs> I think, is relational. And it requires mm. a lot of relational skill. Um, right. I call this mission impossible at one point in my book. I call it emotional karate in another point. Um, that it's, you know, it takes a lot of skill. And even when you have all of those relational skills, your emotions are going to overwhelm you. And managing this shit is going to be really hard. Yes. And uh, I think what many don't realize is that... Um, because no child enters adulthood unscarred, a lot of this stems from childhood, right? A lot of this stems from um, how we were raised, our wiring. Uh, we're, we're not like blank canvases. We're coming into a relationship already with a story, wounds, you know, our own shit, right? And so the yeah, collision of lots. two different stories uh, can, can, can create a lot of activation. Yeah. What I find interesting, though, is when people are like, my childhood was normal or 
you know, my mm. parents were really present and they were really great parents. <laughs> and like, where's the lie? <laughs> Something's off here. This yeah. sounds really scary. Yeah. Or you're not looking deep enough. Uh, you're just yeah. playing back the highlight it's reel. It's called right? denial. Yeah. <laughs> it's called denial. So yeah. I want to put a bookmark there and I want to talk about you. How did yeah. you get here? Um, so obviously I'm, I'm going to ask you um, what sparked you to write this book, why it was important to you. But even before that, um, how did you get to doing what you're doing now, becoming a therapist slash sex therapist? What made you follow this, this path? Well, I had a lot of sex. And that, no, I'm kidding. Oh. Um, well, <laughs> I, mean, I guess I've had a lot of sex, um, but no, that's really not it. Uh, wait, well, wait, so, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let, let's, uh, let quote unquote, uh, bro down a little bit. Um, I know you might hate that term, but uh, what, what is a lot of no, sex? No, I kind what of is like a, it. <laughs> what, is a, what is a lot of sex to you? Because I'm going to use that in some role play with my partner, bro down. Ooh, that's um, hot. Like, let's be frank be. guys and just fuck, let's be yeah. toxic. You know, yeah, yeah just, yeah, just yeah. in the bedroom, yeah. And then be all woke outside. Like once after totally. we finish, we could be all woke. But right, let's just yeah. throw down and yeah. What's a lot of what's a lot of sex? Let's, what's a lot of sex for you? Because I feel like it's different than than me. <laughs> everybody has a different version of what a lot of yeah. sex is, and yeah. also everybody's identity gives them permission to have more sex. Whether you know mm. your whether it's your gender, your race, your ethnicity, um, your sexual orientation, etc. Um, there's a variety of different definitions of what a lot of sex is. So like gay men, for instance, a lot of sex is a lot of sex. Um, for Give straight men, I think I'm the so same, curious. I don't Give me know number. the number. I, you know, I used to keep track and now I don't keep track, but it was All a right, lot. Okay. I mean, when I was okay, younger, well, it was like multiple people a week and I'm 38. So like, I don't wow. know you do the math. Well, okay. So when, <laughs> I, was not when college, I was in my relationship. <clears throat> Right. Well, I mean, we have a lot of sex in relationships and we don't think about yeah. that because there's one person. But so when I was in college, um, I, I did OK, but I, I had very attractive <laughs> male friends um, who, who were and they were all in the hundreds club. I mean, we, were, we were only like uh, 20, I don't know, 25. Club. And I wasn't even near that. And I was so jealous that these guys have had sexual have over 100 sexual experiences. Right. And uh, so so to me, that's a lot. Um, but maybe yeah, for other people, lot. that's like not that much. At it's 25. a lot. But I mean, yeah. the thing is, is I had a lot of casual sex, but it really wasn't until I entered my long-term relationship that I write about in the book that I was able to fully explore my sexual mm -hmm. preferences and mm -hmm. desires and kinks and actually feel comfortable in my sexuality. Um, right. That, yeah, I was having a lot of casual sex, but I didn't know the people. I didn't feel comfortable with them. And I was enacting one type of sex. But it was only when I was with my ex for 10 years that over the course of our relationship, I was really able to relax into mm. um, the dynamic, my sexuality, and try a variety of different things, feeling safe, farting, making weird noise, like whatever. Right, um, right. And it was really that experience, the ongoing ability to have regular sex with one person that I felt safe with, that I was able to, I think, become good at sex. <laughs> Um, yeah. but that's not something that everybody has access to, which is also a big challenge when it comes to sex is the people like, I want to improve sex, but I can't find anyone to do it with. And sex mm -hmm. is a skill. So you need to have it if you want to build that skill. Um, but so, yeah, it was a lot of sex before my ex. And then with my ex, I realized that, you know, the sex I was having wasn't necessarily great. Um, but it's different for everybody. Some people have better mm -hmm. sex when there's no emotional intimacy and some people have right. better sex when there's a ton of emotional intimacy. Right, right. Uh, and I, I also don't want to um, put any labels on any of this. Um, when I said a lot, maybe just saying that a lot of sex is already stigma and a label. Do you know what I'm saying? Because um, I don't want people to judge because uh, – uh, you, you have had, you know, X amount of partners of, you know, because uh, I think a lot of that happens in society, you know? Yeah. And, I mean, and, and also, also a reframe um, is just like a lot of sex is great. You know, we don't, right, right, you know, right. being it's a slut bad. is great, four out, like whatever. <laughs> it, it doesn't, it's irrelevant. Where like I, people yeah. were d used to count, like, you know, people. Well, used to talk about body count and all of that yeah, shit. And yeah, that and, is... and be judged, especially women, and be man. Judged. They get judged, yeah, yeah. big time. Um, and For so sure. a lot of secrecy, not being honest because they're scared they're gonna their partner or people or people they're dating are gonna judge them because they slept with a lot of people. And, and you know, yeah. I think really there's still a lot of slut shaming. The women still are not allowed to have sex. It's pretty crazy. Like I have clients that um, yeah. are 
just recently divorced or going through breakups and they're having sex and they're being judged for it. And then I have the same yeah. clients that are guys doing the same thing and they're being encouraged and celebrated. It's just crazy. Do you think it's changing at all today <clears throat> with uh, just how people are more fluid, you know, abs, open, um, even like kink, I think is um, look, looked at now almost kind of filed under wellness and self-care instead of this weird thing that is, you know, um, I'm, I'm visualizing in the eighties when we used to come out of porn, porn shops with black, um, black, uh, black bags to high, high. Yeah. like that's not kink anymore. Kink is no. interesting and different and okay. And yeah. I mean, things are definitely changing. Cultural values are changing. Um, yeah. but that doesn't mean that because they've changed, people aren't still carrying around a fuck ton of shame and anxiety around oh, yeah. these new values. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of a mind fuck because on the one hand we're like, do it, have sex. Everyone should be sexually liberated. Yet for the past like hundreds of years, we've desperately shamed people, criticized them yeah. and condemned them for how they express themselves sexually. It's, it's a really, it's a bit of a mind fuck. So it's a confusing time, I think for people sexually. Tell us about you. Um, how Me. did you get here? Yeah. How did you get um, here? Um, I know a little I've, bit of your story from in bloom, but uh, how yeah, did you get to doing what you're doing now? Problems. Um, <laughs> Basically, I have a lot of problems, but I'm aware of them. And uh, I've been in therapy f absolutely forever. I've mm -hmm. barely missed a week since I was 10. Um, I still see the wow. same therapist since I started seeing him at 15. Derek, who uh, I write a lot about in my book. Um, he's like surrogate father for me. Um, mm. <clears throat> I'm supposed to see Wait, him today, what, what is it about this therapist? What is it about Derek that, that has really been um, – why did you never leave him? A lot of people go through different therapists as they go through different chapters of their life. Uh, you you seen seen the same therapist since you were ten. That's rare, man. Since I was fifteen, Why? I started therapy 15. at ten, and then I met Derek okay. at fifteen. Got um, it. And I and I've seen other therapists here and there to be like, maybe I'm missing something. And it's funny, yeah. like I'll get the same kind of feedback, which is like, okay, well, I'm giving the information, so it's clearly biased. Um, but uh, no, Derek, when I was younger, he my family was crazy and chaotic and unloving and cold and the environment, mm -hmm. the relational environment he provided me was really protective for me, really gave me and taught me how to be resilient. Um, mm -hmm. He's also a sex therapist. So, you know, I was asked questions when I was really young at a time where I was first at, um, beginning to figure out that I was gay, that I had a body, that I had a dick. And he was asking mm -hmm. me questions about that. So that was really helpful. But um, it was more so, you know, how kind he was to me and how helpful he was yeah. um, and helping me get through uh, my teenage years. Like, I really don't think I would have survived. I was a drug addict. I was drinking a crazy amounts, you know, mm. it was a really hard time for me. And he was there for me, texting me, emailing me, um, every day. Wow. Um, you know, he really served as a surrogate parent. Um, so then when I was leaving to go to college, to move to New York from Boston, um, I was like, well, are we still going to see each other? Cause you know, virtual therapy wasn't a thing. Um, and he was like, yeah, why not? Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, okay. And everybody judged me for having Skype sessions for years, mm. for years, um, yeah. which is just really yeah. funny considering now that it's like no one, I mean, some people have off. Do you have an office? You don't, you don't go into an office, do you? Do you have an office? Uh, no, I, uh, no, I, yeah. all I mean, virtual. it's my garage, garage studio, uh, the, all virtual and then coffee shops. Coffee shops, fun. Yeah, so people judge me, but um, he's just been great. Yeah. A consistent force in my life. Really, really smart guy. Um, so would you would I you say with... that he was the he was the catalyst and inspiration for you to um, kind of follow in his yeah. footsteps as far as career? Oh, nice. Totally. I mean, it was with him that I started to be able to put words to what I couldn't understand mm -hmm. and explain as like a 15, mm -hmm. 16, 17, 18, 19, et cetera year old with my yeah. family about how dysfunctional it was. And I just didn't get it. So he kind of he gave me this narrative and not like a, your family fucking sucks narrative, a very complex narrative about the psychological and philosophical dynamics of what was happening for me. And so it was mm -hmm. that that really helped me feel calmer um, and just a, more at peace and just a, more understanding. So then when I got to school, I was like, I want to know more. Um, right. And then I realized, well, this was really impactful for me. The information and the knowledge is really interesting and also really helpful for me. Uh, and I'd like to do this with other people. So then I went to grad school. But it was really coming out of this place of um, suffering my own mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and my own repair and therapy that uh, motivated me to do this.
Um, where did you get your 3,000 hours? Is it 3,000 in New York? Or <laughs> no, I don't 2, even 000? remember. Um, it's a blur. Well, I went to University of Miami for grad school 2012 mm -hmm. or 11. And so then I got initially licensed in Florida. Um, mm. And then I came to New York. I don't remember what the hours were. And then did you get active on social right away? Or was... No. was uh, um, w were you doing no. Instagram for fun? Or... Uh, did you know you were going to use it as a tool for you, for, for this? No, I hated Instagram. I was one of those mm. people that was like, fuck that. I don't need that. Um, yeah, that's yeah, dumb. Yeah. I was really oppositional. Um, and it really wasn't until I, I guess I got out of my relationship that I was dating and mm -hmm. people were like, what's your Instagram? I want to see more of what you look like. Mm. It's like, I don't have one. And this was like five years ago. Um, maybe now. Oh my God. This is seven years ago. Um, so then I made an Instagram and it was just like me and art and whatever. And I still hated it and thought it was stupid. And, um, well, pe people seem to love it because you <laughs> blew up on Instagram. Well, and, and, yeah. and also, um, when you say art, it reminds me of the, uh, the things that you do. They're very artistic, the font, the brightness. You think that's what, uh, what attracted people? Cause you don't, you don't, you don't put your face out there a lot or do you? No, I'm trying to, yeah. um, I just can't, I'm like. Sometimes I feel like I need these really curated images of me and not just a dumb selfie, but I'm trying to stop with that. Also, it's bad for business. So I've been told. Um, but you know what is, I mean, you know what's good for business? I hear there's what? a rumor that's a very sexy photo of you, but you made it a story <laughs> instead of a feed, so no one saw it. But no, I it's on my personal page. I have a personal page. Oh. You can you can stare at it all day there at Toddasparrots.com. <laughs> Toddasparrots. <laughs> I, I don't I even think, know. Um, I think people want some more of that. Some some more shirtless Todd. Yeah. Well. Yeah. It'll it'll come. All right. Sweet. Um, so you yeah. blew up on Instagram. Uh, now you up. are you are a, a therapist and a sex therapist, and then you decided to write a book. So tell us about this book. Yeah, the book is how to love someone without losing your mind. Um, it's really it's been sorry. Everything's so loud here. That's what okay. Can you hear You're that? in New York. Dog You're in New York, man. It's given. <laughs> oh I can't. I don't I, know what it's this okay. is. I'm this so is sorry. Part of it, Don. It's all right. <laughs> all right. We have to. Sorry. We'll edit that out. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Hey, what about some uh, a little entertainment from me while we wait? I'm a really good whistler. Okay, now I'm damaged. Can you still hear me? Yeah, okay. I can hear you. Yeah. Um, you want to damage my eardrums? Well, when when you when you left just to buy time because I'm a really good whistler, I started yeah. to do a little. It was gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, you know what? Dogs, sirens, dude, there's parrots oh. outside where I work. It's all good. It's all part of this. That sounds it's, uh, nice. Parrots. It's the whole experience. Parrots in Los Angeles. That sounds cool. Um, yeah. Anyway, my book. Uh, yeah, right. Um, where did my book come from? It's about me. It's about my clients, and it's about the world. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I started with a variety of different proposals. I don't know what kind of – I'm interested to hear your experience. I'm always interested to hear other authors' experience. With publishing. Yeah, yeah, it's such yeah. a weird – fucking thing um wait did they but, approach you say hey todd we want you to write a book because you have a following and we love what you're saying or did you say look i'm gonna write a book and you went out and approached other people it was publishers. like a combination of both okay. yeah um and so i so i had gotten out of my relationship and i had grown mm -hmm. and learned and been confronted by so many things i wasn't prepared for and i realized um also having people dming me with similar mm -hmm. concerns about when, when is it an appropriate time to move on after a breakup? How to mm. break up with somebody? Is it time to leave, to leave, to stay, blah, blah, blah. Right. Um, and I had been getting all of that shit for a long time and going through it in my relationship. And then finally I ended it and it was like this big, um, this huge event. And so having gone through all this shit in my relationship and helping different couples and individuals working through shit in their relationships, I was like, this could be an interesting book. Um, mm -hmm. And also talking about my own experience in therapy, I don't know anybody else that's really been seeing the same therapist for that long and that right. consistently. So I thought it would be cool to um, create a, a mashup of those three experiences, which is what I did. So 
Um, I write about my relationship with my ex, Alex, uh, over the course of a 10 year relationship, um, and all of the challenges and mind fucks mm -hmm. and shit that went down. Um, it was interesting is there were times where like I was going through something with Alex, like he cheated on me at the same time. Some of my clients, um, were going mm -hmm. through infidelity. My dad died mm -hmm. at the same time. One of my wow. clients' dads died. It was, it's just, it's, as you know, it's really <laughs> interesting being a therapist going through shit and having your clients yeah. going through the same exact shit and everyone thinking that they're fucked up for going through the same universal emotional mm -hmm. and relational experiences. So I was like, what is going on here? No one's crazy. Everyone thinks they're crazy. All this yeah. stuff is normal, but we don't get any preparation for it. You know, we learn right. how to do math or driver's ed. Um, so anyway, um, that's what my book is about. My book is about my experiences in and out of therapy, my experience as a therapist, um, and relationships as a whole in general, talking about it from um, today to, you know, hundreds of years ago and how things have evolved. What uh, was that your big one? Your last relationship? The was how, how many years was that? The one yeah, where you it cheated? Was, I met him when I was 20 and it ended when I was 30. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> um, oh, yeah so it was that's... a long time. That's a huge, and not only a long time, but a very yeah. significant part in your life or 20 yeah, or 30. Developmentally, it was pretty uh, huge. I grew what up would you, What would you say that you've learned? What are some revelations from that relationship? <laughs> what did you learn about yourself and love? So many things. I, I mean, isn't that the value though? Isn't that the value of any relationship as they expire? Yeah. You can either be, be bitter, angry, and, 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 you know, fuck love and be scared and start walking with the shield. Or you could say wow, because of that, here's what I, now I know about myself, how I want to show up, love definitions and all that. So what are some of yours? Yeah, exactly. I didn't write about this in the book about relational endings that, you know, they're the, what is it, two sides of the same coin, relational beginnings and endings mm -hmm. um, that you grow and you learn so much the same amount, if not more, when you end a relationship as you do when you begin one. Oh, Nobody yeah. talks about it. No one talks about um, it. It's just a failure. You know, there's a lot of stigma. There's blame mm -hmm. that goes around and regret. But the reality is the end of a relationship is a huge turning point. Um, mm. And it was for me and it is for mm -hmm. everybody, even if it ends in, you know, this awful place, you know, the amount of growing and changing that happens in life after an ending um, and loss is huge. Um, anyway, the things that I learned, what did I learn? I mean, I, I learned a lot about my issues um, mm. that while I was in the relationship, I just couldn't see specifically a lot of my trauma was being triggered by my ex and mm -hmm. I just felt so self-righteous about what I wasn't about not getting my needs fulfilled mm -hmm. that I couldn't fully see that the fear and the sadness I felt about my needs being unfulfilled weren't necessarily about my ex not fulfilling my needs. It was about mm -hmm. my parents. Um, oh. But I was so triggered and so overwhelmed um, that my therapist was like, I think this is a memoir every session. And I'm like, but he's just, he doesn't ask me how my day was. And like, that's just a basic thing. And blah, 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 blah. <laughs> wait, wait, um, this is really important. Wait, hold on. Connect some dots here. How um, were, were you um, feeling that you weren't getting your needs met in this relationship? How's that tied to your parents? Uh, well, my parents didn't meet my needs. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, in terms of expressing curiosity, empathy, uh, yeah, in terms yeah. of helping foster my internal yeah. world and then communicating that externally. Um, so, you know, when my ex wouldn't ask me how my day was or um, ask questions about why I was sad or, you know, really kind of mm. do what I wanted a therapist to do because I'm a therapist and I'm like, he should just ask me these 35 different questions about my right. mood state. That's so strange. Right. If he um, cared, he would. If he loved me, if he, he would. cared, he and would. He's not, yeah. Yeah, and he's not doing it, and I don't want to be with right. someone like that, blah, blah, blah. Right. But, you know, right. what I was really responding to was the chunks of emotional PTSD that was coming up for me from childhood. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I really, it really, once I got out of that spell, that self-righteous, contemptuous shit of, you know, they're the problem, I was able to take a step back and really understand um, what was coming up for me and how much it actually comes up for me and how much mm. my trauma has really impacted me. I mean, uh, being in therapy, I was aware of it on an intellectual basis, but it really wasn't until I was in the relationship and then out of the relationship that I was like, whoa, I didn't realize that that's how much it could change right. my perspective. That's how yeah. much it could stir up such powerful emotions. Like, you know, it was really hard to realize and it is for anyone when you're in it. Um, so getting space from that, I learned a lot about my trauma um in a way that i could fully integrate it into a narrative that would make sense for me um, yeah i mean that's uh 
there's a difference between theory and the things that we read about. You know, we take video right. courses and all this. Uh, that, that's very Interest. different than actually um, a somatic experience, as in being in a relationship. Yeah. And, uh, you know, even therapists struggle because we're human. What comes up and then how to work through all of that. And and that uh, it's, it's rarely about what's on the surface. So yeah. um, digging deeper and you realizing that, uh, yeah, this stuff is tied to um, parents and what they didn't give me. And now I'm kind of pushing that on my partner. And then, and then you now taking ownership. And I think that's where the growth is, right? Yeah, fully understanding myself and owning that I was playing a huge role. And that's not to say that yeah. like I shouldn't have ended the relationship. It's just to say that my perspective of who he was, was being deeply shaped by my earlier experiences. And then my emotional mm -hmm. responses were being shaped by that perspective and my earlier experiences of which I was not aware of at the time, wow. um, in a real way, which now I am. Right. And now I'm deeply applying that to my relationship currently, which is a new one. Um, how long have you been which with is hard, this I'm relationship? Like, the current like, one? Is this really how much my, how I was traumatized? Like, Jesus Christ, why am I reacting like this? I think this we're frozen. I think frozen for a little bit. I'm frozen. How long have you been in, how long have you been in this relationship? This is new. This is six months, I think. Ooh, honeymoon. How's it is going? A honeymoon? I mean, I don't know. I'm six months is kind of where the, the idea of a honeymoon, especially oh, as an erotic it. adult with trauma. <laughs> Like, is that how you well, is that how you identify an erotic an erotic adult with trauma? It's a little little. It's interesting. It's um yeah, kind of. I went on a date with someone adult. that was a friend of a friend, and he the report was that they liked me and they thought I was a uh, confidently neurotic, and I was like, I'll take that. <laughs> mm, yeah, it's interesting. Um, it's abstract. As a yeah, so I six months take in it, whatever. Wait, I, I like you saying that I don't know if I'm uh, into this whole idea of the honeymoon. I love shattering old blueprints. So everyone's aware of the honeymoon stage and, you know, it's whatever, a few months into meeting someone new and all the do dopamine chemicals. Um, why, why is this uh, a misconception or maybe false? Tell me about it. I mean, I don't know. I think part of me does still believe that there is a certain amount of time at the beginning of a relationship where problems are minimal. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, though, like the duration my the honeymoon phase of my last relationship in retrospect, I don't know if I can rely on my memory, but it felt like it was a really long time. I was also 20. Right. So right. I don't right. know. I was in a delusional state. Um, now I have, you know, a encyclopedia of anxiety and fears that I'm fully aware mm -hmm. of. Um, mm -hmm. So they can prevent me from being present and relaxing into whatever the honeymoon phase could be that maybe somebody else who doesn't have as many anxieties and fears as I do uh, would be able to relax into it. I don't know. But either way, mm -hmm. new relationship, same stuff comes up, um, yep. which is really interesting. And um, also a little disappointing, but also humanizing. Um, and uh, I think I'm doing better <laughs> at working through it in terms mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. not reacting, not forming this rigid perspective of who my partner is based on what they are or are not doing. Um, but it's hard. Yeah. It's really hard. It's so That's why hard. when people talk about security and insecurity, which I do too, um, they often leave out this crucial aspect that everything's insecure. Most things end. It's mm -hmm. scary. Everything's mm -hmm. a risk. And right. if you have trauma and you're exposing yourself mm -hmm. to risk on purpose, you're going to be anxious and feel insecure unless yeah. someone is like completely a, a, an oppressive force in your life and like won't stop telling you that they love you and doesn't have a life themselves. And it's just like constantly <laughs> right. showering right. you with affirmation then oh, you feel my secure dream. and validation. I know, <laughs> yeah. right? Like just yeah. validate me 24 seven via machine. Ready, set, go. I, I think we're looking, I thought, I think you and I are looking for the same things. Um, yeah. But I don't think that road leads, leads to anywhere healthy. No. Um, how are you different in this one after the 10 year one? How was the Todd 2.0 different in this relationship? <laughs> um, so in the past I would feel something, get anxious and react. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would send the 35 texts. Um, <laughs> right. And maybe not 35, maybe 10, a lot. Yeah. And an a unnecessary lot. amount. My under under 30 seconds. Under 30 seconds, actually. Yeah. yeah. I would become yeah. dysregulated and I would react. Um, mm -hmm. And now I have the same pattern of dysregulation, the same triggers. It's the same shit. 
Mm -hmm. Um, And I know there has to be a way in which I'm reacting, but it's different. I'm not Mm -hmm. sending those text messages. I'm not initiating those conversations. I'm Mm -hmm. trying to, I hold back a little bit more and try to understand it beforehand. I think I talked about this when we were, all of us were together, which was really fun um, before Mm -hmm. in bloom. Um, But uh, I do a lot more processing before I react. Um, And then sometimes I just react and it's not good. That happened once. And I was like, oopsie, sorry. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But I was really upset. Um, But it's interesting to see how the same stuff comes up. I'm like, oh, yeah, same, same fucking person. Okay. (laughs) I want to, Todd, I want to thank you for saying this because I think a lot of therapists, um, I don't know if they sugarcoat, but they, um, you know, talk a lot about how they're, you know, now uh, more secure and all this kind of stuff. And <laughs> for you to say, listen, I've been working on myself since I was 15, was in a 10 year relationship. I'm in a new relationship now. And listen, all the same shit is coming up. And yes, I'm responding instead of reacting, but it's hard and it's, you know, cumulative and it's not, it's not like I'm a whole different person. Right. So um, you, you just, making this realistic because this is what this doesn't mean you're not growing or you haven't changed it just means that 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 it's not it's all still there you know and uh we still have to work on it and work through it um for the rest of our lives yeah i appreciate you saying that um because there are there's so much there's there are many therapists and just people in general that talk about this kind of black and white healing yeah. process yeah. and I, I don't yeah i don't know if I don't think that's realistic. And it's still, whenever I encounter that, I'm like, I want that. And I'm like, no, it's not real. Um, it's it is real. Tactic. You don't go, you know, go to Bali over the weekend, do the ayahuasca, no. come back, you're different. Um, I mean, I don't know, maybe, but uh, at least for me, it's been like you where it's in the moment. It's, uh, you know, uh, sending less text, being less anxious, uh, self-soothing. Um, you know, it's, it's just being just a little bit better, but it's also the same. Like if you want to transform your body, right, you go to the gym every day and, and, uh, you just chip away at it. And I think that's, that's what realistically, uh, self-growth looks like. Yeah. Well, that's why I like the gym so much is it's like in my body is the one, not saying I like my body, but it's like, (laughs) which I'm sure you can relate. It's like the one thing that you actually can control. Like if you go to the gym every day, you can, your body will transform. Whereas like a lot of some of the things that we're talking about, no matter how much time I can put in on it, my body is mm-hmm. still going to react and get scared or anxious during certain time. Right. Right. Um, but uh, that's a tangent. I like to yes, control things. Love. Of course, we all do. Lo- love is yeah. like the gym. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> any, any last words about your book? Is it uh, on pre-order or available now? Is it wide? I don't know when this is coming out, but it, the book is released June 4th, but you can pre-order now. Nice. And uh, are you excited about it? You're going to do um, some kind of tour? This is your first baby, no? Yeah. Um, my people said that tour doesn't really do anything. Did it's you do 80s. the tour? Uh, I, I did a podcast tour. So I just, okay, I cool. mean, like a hundred podcasts. I mean, by the end of the podcast tour, I, I, would, I didn't want to talk about me. I didn't want to open a computer. I didn't want to talk about, I was huh. just fucking burnt. Yeah, I'm doing that. Um, I'm just not doing yeah. the like book tour bookstore thing i'm excited about so, it i mean i'm kind of just excited this is my i don't mean this in this way as it sounds but i'm excited to get it over with like it's just been building and mm-hmm. building and building for years and i'm like yeah, what is this thing yeah. gonna even look like like yeah. i mean what is it how is it gonna do i don't even know right um so i'm excited the, to kind of move on with my life <laughs> the the bookstore thing is cool if you like i went to the strand in new york if you pick mm-hmm. a, a, a few bookstores that are kind of iconic that you love there's something meaningful about that. I mean, it's not going to sell books. It's more of just kind of a, having a, a little celebration. Um, yeah. But the idea of like going on a book tour, that's very 80s. That doesn't happen anymore. Yeah, so I'm not doing that. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm, um, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about your book. And I'm, uh, uh, I think your, everyone, your community is going to love it. And I also love um, how transparent and open you are about your story. You know. Thanks. Yeah. Well, uh, thanks for the chat, Todd, and uh, I have a question for you. I want to end with this. Um, what is your motto? Like, uh, if you were to, I'm sure you have many, but if you were to pick something, um, what, would your, what would your motto be? Like one of my, I have many, but one of mine would be uh, that all parts of your story will be used, right? Mm-hmm. To not, not rip out chapters of your life, even if they, are, uh, they were traumatic or, or bad. Um, what would be a motto from Todd? It's all useful, something like that. 
everything has meaning, everything has a purpose. Mm, everything has purpose? Something like that. I don't know. <laughs> Brett, is that okay? Can you, can Does you, that can you, can you uh, I mean, I don't know. Can you give us a motto without a question mark? Can, can, can there be without a period a at the end? Without a question mark. Everything has yeah. meaning and purpose. Use it. Make sure to use it. You froze. Did you hear me? Did I freeze? Did you freeze? Yeah, Can you, you hear froze me? for a second. Say, yeah, you I froze said for everything a second. has meaning and purpose, so use it. Mm, nice. I love it. Pod. Yeah. Did I say pod? Todd. Pod. Call me pod. That could be fun. Oh, that's kind of cool. I'll call you pod. Um, great Please. meeting you uh, last weekend. Thank you for being on my yeah. podcast. Um, go check out Todd's book. Pre-order right now. It'll be in the show notes. Um, and I hope to uh, wrap with you soon. We could bro down. <laughs> Thank you for having me, John. <laughs> All right. It's good to Be see well. you again. All right. Bye. You too.